Look on Facebook this time of year. Social media is great, isn't it? Because I can, I can look on my phone, and I see so many of you, day one, thankful for just being here today. Day two, I'm thankful for my family. Day three, I'm thankful for my new little puppy called Puddles. Day four, and it goes on and on and on. And it's just that time of year, isn't it, where we start reminiscing, we start thinking about things that we truly care about and that we truly love. And so we look forward to the day where we can join with other people and that we can sit down together and we can just take a deep breath and we can look at those people that we love the most and we can just say thank you for being a part of my life. And so finding yourself in a chair like this one is something that we all desire to do. It's a want that we have inside of our lives and something that we really want to be fulfilled. I want you to read a scripture with me today that's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 16. And it says, be joyful always. It's something that God wants for us, is to make sure that our attitudes are one, that no matter what we're going through, that we can handle it. So, so be joyful always. Pray continuously so that we're able to be close to him and that he's right there at every moment, at every turn in our life, exactly where he desires to be. And then it says this. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. I want to linger there for a moment because it's important today as we talk about Thanksgiving, as we talk about the things that we, we love and the things that we want to be around. It, it's important that we look at verse 18 and it says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And so this time of the, the year, as we become a little sentimental, and we sit down in our chair, and we begin to type on our Facebook page, or as we begin to text somebody that we love, it's pretty easy just, just to think about all of the people that we care about and all the things that we love to do. And it's, it's, it's not so hard for us to find avenues to be able to thank people, to be able to rejoice with people and be happy about certain things in other people's lives, to realize that the relationship that we have with Christ is so important. But the holidays end, and then... And then it's just back to the same old, same old, isn't it? The same, the same grind. Christ must know something and Paul must know something extremely important to our lives because he tells us to give thanks continually no matter what. So when you're sitting here in the chair and you say, I thank you God so much for my spouse and everything that they mean to me and everything that they've done for me. I appreciate that. But then when you're not in the chair, and you say, but you know, my spouse really, really gets under my skin. The things that they do and the way that they act sometimes really, really frustrates me and bothers me. But I love them so very much. And I, I, and I do appreciate them for, for most things and, and, and what, they, what they do in my life. I'm thankful, I'm thankful today for my kids. Man, just being able to watch them grow up at every time they start to fight. Oh, have you ever listened to my kids fight? They scream and they yell and they, they start slamming doors and they, they start, oh man, you know, but I truly do love, I, lo I, I love, I love my kids. I love the church that I go to. Oh, it's the best church. I mean, the people are so friendly and kind, and, and they, they, it's just, I don't know. I can't imagine going any place else besides that other church in town that looks pretty interesting to me. 
because they do have a few more programs that I'm, I'm interested in. And I, I'm thinking about trying that church out because it might benefit me just a little bit better. But I love the church that I go to now. It is, it is a nice little place. So when you look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and you start to read, you start to realize that maybe, maybe I don't give thanks in all circumstances. Maybe there are occasions where that I forget that God has my best interest at heart. He doesn't just lose, he doesn't just lose that along the way for me. He really, he really sees me and he cares for me and he desires the best for me. And so even though I'm not thanking him for everything, the good times and the bad, he still never changes along the way. I just forget to sit, sit down sometimes and think about what he truly does. The author of James, which I personally probably don't like because of the first chapter and how it reads. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered across the nations. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Let me stand up for this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. I'm not thankful for that. I just refuse to thank God for that. For trials of many kinds, when things come my way, when, when, when things are going bad, when it's not how I planned it in my life, I refuse today, right? To say that I'm going to consider it pure joy to have to go through all this junk that we have to go through. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, and perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Wow. Maybe, maybe God does know more than what I realize. Because he's saying, no matter what I go through, good or bad, when I face it head on, good or bad, that if, if I face it with Him, head on, straight forward, that He's going to bring me through that, no matter what, even if I feel like I can handle it or not, even if it feels like it's just too much to bear or too big of a load, then I began to mature in that. And I began to realize well, maybe I can handle all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Maybe, maybe things that come my way, obstacles that appear like obstacles, maybe that's not really what they are at all. Maybe it's an opportunity for God to shine in my life. Maybe it's an opportunity for God to receive glory from it. If you look in John chapter 6, there's a story about Jesus, and he's going to feed thousands of people. People followed Jesus because he had this draw about him. He would begin to teach, he would begin to talk, and people just knew there was something different. He wasn't just a normal man. This guy had something special to say. And so thousands would follow him as he would go through the towns. And he had just came uh, by the Sea of Galilee. And crowds of people began to follow him. And he goes up and he's, he, he's teaching from a hillside. Night's coming. And here's what I love about chapter 6. Nothing surprises Jesus. Jesus knows that there's thousands of people listening to him. Jesus knows that all of these people are going to become hungry soon. And his disciples, which are around him, which I compare more like us, you know. Hey, by the way, Jesus, have you thought about how you're going to feed these people? You better turn them loose now because you don't want to re be responsible for 
uh, taking care of all of these people that you've brought to this hillside and you've taught for so long. I know they're interested in you, Jesus. I know that they want to hear what you have to say. But have, have, you, have you realized you're going to have to feed these people? They're going to go home hungry. Chapter 6, Jesus has a plan all the time. Never has he intended for them to go away hungry, but the whole time. He has this plan because he wants the disciples to know that he is real. He wants the disciples to understand that they can call upon him and he'll answer. So, so you know the story. What, what do you have? It'd it, it take eight, eight months' wages to be able to buy enough bread to feed these people, Jesus. Do you not understand that we can't afford this if nothing else? Uh, we'll be able to afford it. We'll be able to afford it. We'll get it done. It, it'll be accomplished. What, what do you have amongst yourselves? What do you, what do you have? And one disciple calls out, I've got a little boy... And he's got a little lunch. And that's all we've got for thousands of people. Doesn't look like much. Doesn't look like that they're going to make it. Doesn't look like that they'll survive. Doesn't look like that it's going to be enough to stretch. But this is the concept that I'm talking about this morning. Because here's what Jesus does. And if we can apply this somehow to our lives this morning, it works for us over and over and over again. John chapter 6 Verse 11, it says, Then Jesus took the loaves, and what did he do? He gave thanks. He took the loaves, and he gave thanks. God, I know that it looks like a big job for you. There's thousands of people sitting here on a hill, and they're all depending upon me. Not only to tell them your word, not to, not to show them who you are. But God, it's important that you take care of their physical body too. My disciples, they need to mature. They need to learn that they can depend upon you no matter what. And that when, when things like this happen and occur, that they don't freak out and try to fix it on their own by, by running all over the... The city trying to find enough. They can't even afford it, God. You know that and I know that. But I'm going to take this bread and I'm going to thank you for it, God. And when I break it and I start to hand it out to all these people, then let it be enough. Let it, let it be more than enough. Not just so that they can say, wow, look at what Jesus did. That where God, my life glorifies you. And I can say my God provided today. And so all of a sudden he gives thanks. And he begins to distribute what that little boy had. And it was enough. So much, chapter 6 says that they, they gathered it all back together. And they sent it home with those that came. We could look at that story and, and apply it to our lives sometimes and say, you know, certain things look overwhelming to us. Things that we can't accomplish, accomplish on our own. Things that we can't control. Things that just stress us out beyond belief. Have you ever thought about just setting down for a moment? Not just, not just saying, I can't, I, can't, I can't overcome it. It's too much for me, God. But just, just setting down for a moment and saying, thank you so much for, for bringing me to this place, God. Whatever that place is. I always think for some reason you think that I don't understand you. So I'll say, you don't understand, Chad. My finances, you know. I understand. I forgot to put the, the checks in the bank the other day. This, this account that we use. I forgot. It's my fault. They were in my billfold. I'm, I'm really bad about collecting checks and leaving them there, you know. There'll be hundreds, 
sometimes thousands of dollars in my billfold, and it's just, they're just there. And every so often I'll deposit. So I call the bank because I'm, you know, really good with finances and all. And I press all the buttons that I need to press. And they said, your account has 77 cents. I thought that must have been a mistake. So I pressed one again. Your account has 77 cents. The next number I called was my wife. I said, do not use your debit card. I said, I have checks in my pocket. I will deposit them in that account. I said, but do not use the debit card. A 79 cent big gulp would have cost us $25.79. Do not use that debit card. See, you sit here today and you say, well, I don't know if you understand what it feels like to struggle sometimes. And maybe I don't. Maybe I, I, God's blessed us. So I, I don't know if I know exactly what you're talking about or not. But I do know this. Whether I have 77 cents or $77 or $77,000, it's all the same to me. Because God gives and God takes away but the word of, the God, the word of God says, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Because in any situation, I desire, and I know you do too, for him to use you in those times and in those opportunities. I don't know why you're broke today. I don't know if it was bad financial planning on your part. I don't know if you overextended yourself. I, I don't understand or know why you're in that place today, if that's you. But I can tell you this. That God is not going to let you die there. Thank God that he's brought you to the place so that you can mature in him. And that you'll be able to give him glory as you climb out. Dollar by dollar, job by job, whatever it takes to be able to get back on top for your family and for yourself. You dig it out because God helps you to do that. And I think, or you can stand up and you can say, this life is not fair. It's not fair that people take from me and abuse me and has taken advantage of me. And I just, I just don't want to take it anymore. I, I can't stand people when they come up and they act like they got a little bit of money and they start treating me different because I don't. Man, that's such a, that's such a, just a horrible spot to be in. Just sit down and thank him for a little while that, no matter what your situation is, it's going to be okay. It's going to, it's, you're going to survive. There's people that are sitting around you today that has made a promise, a covenant, if you will. They said that they won't let you. They won't let you suffer. They won't, they won't let you just go on by. They, they will do whatever it takes for you in your life to make sure that you're okay. You don't, you don't understand, Chad. My marriage, it's, on, it's just on the rocks. It's, it's over. It just, it looks bleak. It just, we fight. It's just not, it's just not good. You don't understand. I understand marriage well. I have one. You know? It... It's hard to do sometimes. But no matter where you're at, you have, you have a decision that you make. I love my spouse more than anything, and I thank God for the good and the bad, the rich and the poor, the sick, you know, all, all of those. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for bringing me across that path so that we could intercept and we could meet. Or you can just continue to look at all of the things that your spouse does wrong. And it'll destroy your marriage. It will eat it up. And it will be spit out on the ground like it's worthless. 
And if you talk like that, and if you act like that, and that's truly what you feel like inside, not for one second, don't think it doesn't come across when you walk down the hallway or into the kitchen or home from work. Thank you, God, for what I have. Let me mature enough in you so that my marriage, our marriage, glorifies you. Let me mature enough to know when to say something and know when to keep my mouth shut. Know, know when to love and know when just to step back just a little. You don't understand, Chad. I'm so sick. It doesn't look good. The doctor said. Thank God for life. For every breath that you breathe. Thank, thank God that he's put you here on this place so that you can accomplish something in your life. Or you can just say, I wish I'd die. I hurt so bad or the report is one that doesn't look good. And I'm just ready for it to be over. I'd rather you sit in this chair for a while, if you don't mind. And I can't go through every circumstance or every situation or every thing that you might face in life. You don't have time for that this morning. And so sometimes we sit and we wait and we say, God, if you just, if you just call my situation out, or if somehow, some way, that guy up there on the stage... Should, could just look at me in such a way that I would know that it's you that I have no ability like that today because it's not about me looking at you or calling out your name or talking about a situation or a circumstance this is about us connecting with God and saying you know I might just in every circumstance no matter what it is, count it pure joy. No matter what I go through. A kid's leaving home or... Being separated from family. I had a really a close friend. Um that's really been giving me some problems lately. For whatever reason, he's, he, he doesn't appreciate me anymore. Doesn't, doesn't like me much. And so, he said some things that are really hurtful. You know, that really kind of abusive, I thought. And so, so I hadn't responded, but I, I tried to decide, how, how am I going to handle this situation? Because it, it just seems like it hurts too much. And so I had studied for this message this week, and this morning about 5.30 I woke up. And this person was on my mind, and I thought, I'm going to sit down for a moment. And even though the relationship is strained, and even though I haven't responded to any, anything that's taken place yet, text messages or Facebook thing, I, I've not done anything. But God quickened me. He said, just sit down for a moment. And I did. And I got on my phone, and I started typing out a message that I could send. I told him how much that I loved him. How much did I cared for him? About the amazing things that he's accomplished in his life. And how those things were important to me. And thanks for being a part. Now, I don't know how he'll respond. 
I don't have a clue. He, he might respond back to me, I don't, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to, I don't know. But I'm telling you today, I feel good about it. Today, I feel like glory, God received more glory from me in those circumstances that were rough and tough and hard. He received more glory from me setting down and praising and thanking than he ever will me fighting tooth and nail for my honor or for my good. It's something about changing our attitudes towards people. I'm just asking you for a moment just to sit down and thank God for what you have. Good and bad. And when we do that, we mature in Him and He receives glory from it. Would you make the chair that you're sitting in now that chair for you this morning? And as you sit, we just pray together. And I just want you, you and him, good and bad, great and, and the ugly stuff, just to begin to thank him for everything that you have, everything that you're going through. Every, every opportunity that you have to take what looks gigantic and too big and turn it into a situation that God can, that God can, can control and can take, a, can, can take care of. I think that's what he did with my situation today. Because I chose to sit down and just thank him for it. He'll do the same in yours.